Yeah, no, my teammates did a great job of finding me in transition a couple times. Saw a couple go in, and then, yeah, like you said, playing some bigger bodies helped a little bit. Some guys my own size, and then um, not facing the double team, obviously, um, gives you a little bit more of an opportunity. So I think those three things combined helped. Mark had a question. Thanks. Mark. Max, uh, there was, I think, 24 straight points there in the first, uh, in the first half. Mm -hmm. What changed in, for, in terms of getting stops that maybe helped make that happen? Yeah, like you said, um, I think we said in the locker room, was it 15? We got like 15 stops in a row. Uh, we usually shoot for three in a row, call it a kill. Obviously, if you stack. You know, a lot of those in a row, good things are going to happen. But I think that just translates down to offense, uh, getting good shots, um, you know, throwing the ball inside to Steve when we can, knowing he had it going pretty early today. And just his ability to be aggressive uh, aggressive from the, ju from the jump um, kind of opens the floor up for a lot of the other guys. Um, but I think it was just our defensive mentality that kind of changed and had the tide swing in our favor there in the first half. Michael, right up front for us. Steve, with the way that you guys are attacking from the perimeter this year, mm -hmm. are you still trying to figure out how to get productive post looks? Is that something that even when the double team comes, you can work on? Yeah, no, I think it's not just me either. I think it's all of us. Um, we have a bunch of new guys, so just trying to blend the new guys with what we've had from years past. And um, I think it's starting to come to better or come together and starting to look a little bit better. So, um, yeah. Uh, for all three of you, first three games in the second half, 50 points against Holy Cross, 40 points against Montana State, 51 today. What has kind of allowed for you guys to really come together in the second half after maybe some slow starts in the beginning to put together some complete performances? Um, <clears throat> I think like a lot of it just, a lot of it ends up like it equaling out or leveling out. Um, like, you know, against Holy Cross, they're making a lot of stuff early. Um, Nothing against Holy Cross, but like it has to level out somehow or some way. You're not going to shoot like 80% from three and everything like that. And you know, App State kind of came out, um, got to the rim early, hit a couple threes early. Um, so I mean, credit to them for coming out ready to play. But I think just our ability to kind of stay together in those moments and not like fracture, not you know, start finger pointing things like that. Um, there's a lot of like-minded individuals in the locker room. And our halftime speeches, just as those players are so productive in there. Like no one's, like I said, no one's finger pointing. And it's, what are we doing well? What are we doing bad? Let's focus on what we're doing well more than we're doing bad because that's what we can go and improve for 20 minutes. There's no sense of coming in and dwelling on stuff, um, you know, thinking about what could have been, what should have happened. All we have is the 20 minutes that are ahead of us now. So I think there's a lot of older guys on this team that kind of enforce that and kind of bring that about them, which makes it easier for these young guys to kind of follow um, behind. But um, I think just experience is kind of showing what, you know, we are offensively for these explosive second halves we've been having. <clears throat> Set. Michael. Max, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I know. Like five you got five ago. today. Yeah. That was awesome. I didn't even know I had five. I don't even think I had five, but that might be wrong. I think the nine plus minus is also wrong, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know where the hell that's coming from. <laughs> Sorry, but what'd you say? Yeah. What's, what's been allowing you, because this is not just a this game thing, like what's been allowing you to get in the past um, to be honest, I think like a lot of film and a lot of experience, um, like they kept running a set where they kind of ran a handoff to one wing, ran a ball screen. And then like, we're just trying to throw it across the court. And I know I jumped one of those. Um, but like just knowing what guys tendencies are like, you know, Tate, he's going to look for this throwback if he comes off the ball screen, if he doesn't have a lob. So being able to bump the roller and then kind of fall back in the, the passing lane for my guy. But I, I really just. I think it comes down to like experience and playing in so many games, seeing so many different looks and like the ability to adjust on the fly game to game of what point guard likes doing what <clears throat> kind of what the other coaches philosophy is too. Like, is he big on paint touches? Like we haven't played a team that's been this big yet. And that was going to get it into the paint as much as like Holy Cross or Montana state did. Um, so knowing that they were going to look to that early, trying to get as many hands on passes. I think John Tan or John Tanchi, uh, you know, was pretty good in the, 
and the gap stays well. Yeah, two steals there. I mean, we had 14 as a team, so and it was nothing that was out of this world crazy. Like I think it's just our identity of being solid, um, being old, using experience to our advantage, which you know that's where the 14 comes from. Mark, John, uh, yeah, uh, you five assists. I think that was a career high for you. Just can, can you speak to to that part of your? Hey, it's good. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of that is just uh, the guy sitting over there, Stephen Crow, just passing the ball to him. Uh, you know, that's that's what happens. So, um, but no, I think just watching, just watching film, trying to figure out, um, you know, the offense and doing my best to learn game to game and see where our looks are and see where we're at our best. And I think feeding the ball to Steven is um, some of the best offense we can get. So just taking advantage of that um, kind of, you know, gave me five assists. So career high, I'll take it. <laughs> Obviously, uh, I think it's um, – I'm proud of our guys for just how we've gotten better, I think, over this course of this week. And specifically today, I thought at the, on the defensive end, finally started to click and, and put some you know possessions together. Uh, obviously, the, the stretch in the first half of 15 straight possessions with stops, I think it's just guys gain confidence with it. Um, I think we've become more physical and more aggressive. Um, you know, and I think that the, the fact that they're getting better connected with new guys and not only on the roster but guys in different roles is important and um i thought we uh you know once after that first seven eight minute stretch um defensively is where i was really happy with where we've the progress we've made um and we've got a long ways to go yet um but I, it, this is a group that because of its depth and because of its versatility can have that type of impact where if defensively we can continue to grow our identity offensively we can be you know pretty potent because of our depth and versatility and have can, can get scoring in a lot of different ways so um but the defensive end i thought we finally started to put some things together like we have been talking about and we'd shown in flashes but not consistently over a stretch of time so that's a good sign going forward questions Mark. Kind of piggyback off the defense. Can you talk a little bit more about what specifically you know you thought was better or what you thought you know you think you guys were kind of taking away? Yeah, I think we we were better in ball screens and dribble handoffs. We kept the ball out of the paint. Um, deflections. You know, I thought we were active with our hands. Klesma got his hands on uh, a few. Winter got his hands on a few. Tanjay. Um, obviously, we were more aggressive, and I think that started with our ability to put pressure on the ball um, in the half court, and then how we handled some of the ball screens and the dribble handoffs. We we were pretty aggressive with it for the most part. We got caught on a couple uh, lobs where we we were too soft or drug east west with the ball handler um, but i think once we executed it properly we, we were able to really put them back on their heels and and uh obviously were, were more aggressive as the game went on and and that resulted in the turnovers racking up right go ahead coach max today he had the 15 points but also four assists and just one turnover what have you kind of seen from him in the ball handling aspect and kind of you know playing that combo guard role yeah, I mean, they all get put in ball screen situations. That's the beauty of this offense and what we've been doing. I mean, everybody has their opportunity to play to their strengths, and I think he's gotten better at that. Um, I think he's gotten better at playing with vision. Uh, I felt a year ago when we put this in that he that he had a one-track mind in it, and now I think he you can see he sees the other parts of the floor. He's got a little bit of a float game. Um you know, so I think he's just much more comfortable in and, and understanding how to play the angles, how to pinch defenders off, reading the screen when you're dragging guys with you, who's open, where it is, is it the rim runner, is it the backside lift? Um, so I, I just think his confidence and knowledge of it has taken a big step forward. Mike, or who do you? Mike, yeah, Mike, go Mike. ahead. The defense has been able to cause some chaos in these first three, mm -hmm. but as you move on to opponents like Arizona, they can make a matchup with you. Do you feel like where the progress has been that's sustainable? We're going to find out, right? <clears throat> find out. I mean, I hope so. I mean, it needs to be. Um, you know, and that won't be the only barometer. We'll get 
the test we'll have. There'll be others coming down the road, but it's, I mean, you want to be able to do it in these type of games and to give you a chance to execute it against, you know, bigger and better teams. So that'll be, that's the exciting part about this group is the, the growth that we've seen from, from when we started, you know, a week ago um, to where they've, you know, taken some steps forward, but we got a, we got a lot more to go and, you know, Friday night will be a tremendous test for us, but it's, um, I think this group has also understood and embraced the importance of having really good practices, and that's what I told them downstairs. Friday, we'll be here soon enough, but we got to make sure Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, we're really, we're really good like we have been and, and practice well and get better during that time. We got a long, long ways to go in terms of improvement, and um, yeah, I like the, like what I saw from Amos tonight or today. I thought that he got a lot of confidence just playing through uh, that stretch of 12 minutes. Uh, Ilver, I thought, gave us some really good minutes. Janicki. Um, so it's good to have some of those guys that I've been trying to get in, get some extended run and, and play well during that time. I thought they both, um, specifically Ilver and, and Amos, did some good things. It's a quick follow-up on that. Yeah. At this stage of, the, at this stage of last season, it was pretty clear that the offense was ahead of the defense. But do you know where it's at? Now, three games in. I mean, it all depends on the opponent, Mike, and who plays well. I mean, every game is judged, I think, analyzed in its own bubble, so to speak. So I think we've gotten better in, in some areas, um, specifically communication. Um, if we have to switch actions, if we have to, if we get caught in when we're normally hedging ball screens or dribble handoffs. Um, the the biggest piece is where we've gotten ourselves in trouble, and it's this happens with any team, is if you get caught in between. If it's not a hedge and it's not we don't have a switch on the call, they have to organically figure that out because they can't script everything. You know, there's some random things that happen through the course of possessions that they have to continue to um, evolve and, and grow in that area where they pick that up on their own so they understand automatically it's switched if, if the ball's coming downhill without it even being a predetermined call. So uh, that's the growth that I've referred to in terms of picking up some of those things um, that maybe a week ago we were we were a step late with doing and it resulted in a foul or an easier basket. So that's the progress that we got to keep building on. Hey, Greg, you, you touched on it a little bit, but I was just going to ask what kind of stood out uh, most to you about Xavier's performance? Uh, I'd say maybe specifically on the boards and defensively. But thank you. you know, I, I've had him on the scout team um, for the last couple weeks, and as I've we've come into game mode here, and, and in part because it, it forces him really to compete, and I think, and, and that's good for him. I think his, um, his motor and his physicality um, – uh, have to continue to grow, which I've seen grow. And I think the scout team and getting reps, and he's come over with us um, at times too, as is Ilver. But I've watched the benefit of him being over there and having to compete against Winter and Gilmore and Crowell and Tanjay all the time. He You can't you can't half-step it, you know. So it's forced him to raise his game uh, every day in practice. And he's practiced well, as I've told the team. I told the team downstairs, the guys that play well, that's not a secret, right? It, it doesn't happen on game day if you're not doing it the other days of the week, and and Xavier's taken that to heart. He, um, I'm sure he was upset when I first put him over there, but now he sees the benefit of it as how he he's had to compete all the time. And I don't think that was natural for him. It didn't it wasn't didn't come uh, instinctively right away. Um, and obviously he's got an uber amount of talent. You can see that length, size. He's skilled. He shoots it but it was the other intangible pieces that I felt to play at this level and have success at this level, he's got to add that, and I think that's helped bring that out of him. So um, he played well because he's practiced well, because he's really competed, which has been good to see. Donnie? How you doing, Greg? Good. Um, and uh, tonight, you know, you're talking about, you know, the run that you guys went on late in the first half, but it came after, you know, kind of a choppy start to the game. And mm -hmm. first three games, the starts haven't been probably ideal, or at least in comparison to the rest of the game. Curious what you think has contributed, you know, to kind of those slow starts and how you guys can, can improve on that. We could change the water in the water jug maybe, or I give a different pregame talk, or I don't know, tie the other shoe first. Um, <clears throat> some of it's been offense, some of it's been defense, some of it's been a combination. Um, 
you know, so I think they go what seven for eight first time, first eight possessions, whatever. Teams are going to hit shots, but if they're going to hit tough shots versus us making a mistake, like the first three they hit, uh, Blackwell gets caught on a ball screen. Okay, sticks on it, doesn't fight through it. Ball gets downhill. We have to rotate. Causes a drive and kick three. Well, the mistake can be corrected. So, Kamari McGee, go get John Blackwell. Get over the ball screen better. Problem solved. We didn't hedge a ball screen. Ball got downhill. Lob to the lob to the rim. Gilmore, go get winner. Problem solved. So, just correcting the miscues that happen early. Now, if a guy hits a tough step back three over somebody or tough jump shot and we play it correctly, okay, tip your cap and move on. But can they do that over 40 minutes? You know, you just try to minimize and eliminate the mistakes and make them have to make tough shots. And if they can make them for 40, then you've seen a better team. Um, but when we can eradicate the mistakes and force teams to to hit consistent tough shots, um, I think we got a chance to be a pretty good team because we're long, we're versatile, we can we can switch, and we don't give up length very much. Um, I thought we did a decent job of keeping them off the glass. And there were some batted balls, some awkward um, tips came hard off the rim, off the backboard. Um, you know, there's but for the most part, I thought we were physical and made contact. So it's all simple things, you know, that that lead into it. But following the plan, there's and and let's eradicate. The, uh, the miscues early that maybe give a team a more open look than what you want to give them or what they have earned. Mark's got a question. Greg, I just want to get your thoughts on uh, Stevens' play on the, on the offense man and what he, you know, what's kind of stands out to you about that 7-12. Uh, yeah, I think he got more. Uh, I think after the first you know six, seven minutes, I thought he was more – uh, determined to finish at the rim and not worry about any help or raid and then having a double team even better late in the second in the first half but just playing through contact and going at people um, and playing physical and just going to score the ball and, and we've talked a hundred times about how he's so unselfish and at times too unselfish so um, he, he playing one on one he, there's not a lot of guys in the country that are going to be able to handle him over the course of uh, the time he has on the floor. So I want him with an aggressive score first mindset, specifically if you catch it, you know, if you're catching it deep, which is always the goal, um, you know, look look to score, go to work. So uh, I thought he made some good feeds to cutters coming off him. Again, that's always been his strength. He's got a great feel for the game, but continue to have him be more aggressive, finishing at and through people um, makes us better in the paint. Go ahead, Mike Collin. Greg, you seem pretty excited about Marcus had that steal and finish on the other end. I guess how important are those minutes for a guy like that who's got yeah, a chance? It's, to yeah, it's really important because it's a it's a play through physicality that in the past in his career he wouldn't finish. You know, so I've seen a, a change in his and a growth in his mindset of playing physical and playing through those type of things and both ends of the floor. I think he's become a more physical, uh, more determined defender. Um, you know, and I've seen some of that growth with Xavier too, and obviously in a much shorter period of time. But that was, you know, just that simple play right there of him fiz- finishing through and getting fouled, and um, that's that's a change and a growth and a mindset that you never know if it happens in their fourth year or their fourth month. Um, you're constantly trying to raise the bar for them and push them higher. And it was good to see him happy for Marcus because he's because he's he's gotten better. You know, and and there's no doubt. I mean, it's obvious when we have him in practice, and um, it's just a more determined, tough mindset that I think is the the difference in his game right now. I have two more questions. Go ahead. You want, Coach, you gotta, yeah. Through the first three games, two second halves have been over 50 points or at least 50 points. You've hmm. really done well in that time part of the game. I wanted to kind of ask, what has allowed you guys to stay the course and improve as the games have gone on to finish out strong? Yeah, I think I think you hit on one point there. We improve as the game went on. Uh, I think the other thing is just how, again, the depth, the how we play. We're we're pretty good in transition. I don't know what the numbers were today in terms of point per, points per possession, but I think we can. It becomes somewhat a snowball for the opponent that we're constantly coming at them. 
coming at him in transition, coming at him with bigs on the rim, um, you know, pressure on the rim, getting to the foul line. So all those are part of it. And I think it's one specific thing. I think today we were better defensively, especially that, you know, back half of the first half and the second half. So that allows you to, um, you know, obviously extend a lead, but, but offensively to continually um, put pressure on an opponent, um, you know, in a variety of ways, whether it's threes, We've had our barrages of those. Obviously, the last game, um, you know, today I thought we were really at the rim and in the paint. I think it was 26 to 6 in the first half. So that was uh, just that constant, regardless of who's in the game, um, ability to put pressure on the defense. Um, and I think our guys are getting better at, at reading ball screens, reading slips, getting baseline drives. You know, they're, they're starting to read within the offense uh, a little bit better what the options are. Um, so all those things, I think, really add into us being able to, you know, step on the gas and, and get separation in the second half. Final question. Yeah. Uh, Nolan had those six offensive rebounds tonight. We talked a lot over the offseason about how great he was looking as a rebounder. Has it been what you've expected from him so far, or has it been – yeah, no, I think he's he's active. You know, he's active. He's got a nose for the ball, and he's long and bouncy. You know, he's seven feet with long arms, and he's quick off the floor. Um, but you can be a great rebounder and not have those things if you have a, a nose for the ball and have a, a willingness to go get it. And that's his willingness to pursue is the – you know, the most important thing. And then obviously you add in the physical attributes he has to go with it with that size. Um, you know, and I think – he will want to finish better. You know, he's getting getting a lot of offensive rebounds, and now I know some we threw kick back out if he doesn't have it, but his ability to finish through more contact, I think, is the next step for him, specifically in those rebound positions where he's at the rim and, and can blow up through, uh, power through contact and, and finish those plays. That'll be the, you know, one of the final steps of him being a more complete rebounder and finisher in the paint.